Gary is a past district governor. He is currently the uh, chair of the finance committee. He has been on numerous other roles, including foundation roles. He is our incoming district found, uh, Rotary Foundation chair. And a week ago today, he had his knee replaced. Uh, and so this is uh, service above self. And, uh, and he's on more meds than all the rest of us put together right now. And so Gary, I really appreciate you stepping up and doing this. Angela, I appreciate you being there to help. And Gary, I don't want to take more of your time. Uh, so it's all yours. Thank you, Governor. And uh, thank you and Tiffany. And, and I got to thank Angela as well for helping me out here. This is a foundation overview. Uh, the real experts on this, uh, particularly on the grants, are John Davis and John DeWitt and Bob Felt. Why do we have a foundation? Lawrence Klump was one of those wise sages, I think, at least in my mind. And I think most everybody on this call will agree that we shouldn't live just for ourselves, but take some pride and joy in helping others. That was in 1929, and that's a pretty dire time in our nation. It took us a while, though, uh, till night, uh, to develop the uh, uh, Rotary Foundation to its fullest. We started the foundation in 1916. We're at 100, what does that make us 105 years old? Uh, and the mission is pretty straightforward. Help Rotary advance itself in the world through better understanding, better goodwill, and peace. And we take every dollar that we get and convert it, almost every dollar we get, and convert it into service projects that change the world. And you've all said this, I've said this a bazillion times, our goal is to do good in the world. We have seven areas of focus. Six of these you're very familiar with. The environment, perhaps not so much. But if you stop and think about it, we did a presentation on Tuesday. I say we, I didn't do a darn thing. I set it up. Uh, but it was on water uh, purification. But if you think about it, Rotary's been doing environmental projects since the beginning of the foundation. We've been cleaning up streams. We've been cleaning cities. Trash dumps, Frank Bean can talk to that uh, in uh, excruciating detail, and water projects. So environment has been embedded into a lot of our projects already. Now we've made it a separate entity so we can focus more on that. That was a, there was a large discussion at uh, Rotary, the trustees, on whether to do that or not, uh, because it could be seen as political. Now, well, I'm not going to assure you it's not political, but it's not intended to be political. Uh, there are uh, issues in this world, particularly with China and India, where we need clean air and clean water. And we're hoping having this additional area of uh, focus will help us resolve that. That in doing the major, major grant projects, you know, $2 million projects. Foundations are charity. Everyone in this room contributes to at least one charity, I would almost guarantee it. And most of us probably to multiple. But as a Rotarian, I personally think it is our responsibility to support our foundation because it's our charity. And my own story, when I first retired back home, I must have been involved with 15 organizations and everybody wanted a little money and a little time. I said, this has got to stop. So uh, I joined Rotary. I was asked to join Rotary and joined and concentrated our charity efforts on Rotary. We have a global network of people, a global network of clubs uh, and volunteers to help with the projects. It, was a, it made good sense. All of our projects are driven by Rotarians. In most cases, they're led by Rotarians. You can do local projects. You can do international projects. And we pay attention to where the money goes. But just ask uh, uh, Nancy Brooks. She'll tell you where every dollar of the district the designated fund go to. And we have a consistent ranking, highest ranking by charity navigator. But it's our charity. That's important. And, and I think the responsibility of every Rotarian to support that charity. Where do the monies come from? 
You can see these. Now, most of us are very uh, comfortable, knowledgeable about giving money. That foundation club foundation chair comes up to you and says, hey, where's your, uh, where's your annual contribution? You write a check and you go on. Uh, these others are very useful ways to do it too. A bequest, for example. Um, that means you give it now and when you die, you won't care, but the Rotary Foundation gets that. We'll come back to a few, a few of these in a minute when we talk about the million dollar dinner. I'm not gonna talk about all of them in detail, but if you do have questions, I'll answer them. I will get somebody to you that can. But the funds come from us. That's the key because it's our charity. All kinds of easy ways to do this. I'm really proud of Billy Black in uh, 15, 16, I think it was. She really, uh, we'd all talked about it, but she took the initiative to make Rotary Direct uh, a thing in her year as governor. And she did that. We're about 11% uh, part of Rotary Direct in this district. That's one of the highest, if not the highest, in the zone. But it's still dismal, 11% about 250 people out of 2,200. That ought to be in the 80s somewhere. It is so easy. Um, most of us, maybe all of us on this call, pay some kind of bill through a debit, uh, you know, to your credit card, to your checking account, or to some other account. Uh, that's all Rotary Direct is. You can also just go to rotary.org donate and uh, click on that and donate. Very useful with polio uh, because you can go to the polio site and just do that. Or you can go to the Rotary site, find the polio uh, icon and just do that. And most of us, 89%, give a check to the club foundation chair. That's an easy way to do it too. But it takes a lot of activity on your part, on the foundation chair's part, and on the treasurer at RI's part. And it causes a delay in things. And there's really no reason to it. Uh, you can also just mail the darn thing directly to the foundation. I always like to show this slide because it's real easy to do Rotary Direct. Saves time, saves money, saves lives. It's also, it's also at the mailing address. I would encourage you in your clubs to encourage your members to do this. Now, encouraging, you don't stand up and just talk to them. It might get one or two. Ron Weinkoff's an expert for this. He'll walk up to you and put his hand on your shoulder and say, hey, Gary, uh, you know, you ought to be a Rotary Direct guy. And he won't leave until you do it. Uh, and he has a way about it, so it makes it nice. Person to person gets money and person to person uh, gets Rotary Direct. So I would encourage you to take the time out at every Rotary meeting and find two or three people that aren't doing Rotary Direct, have the form with you and talk to them and ask them to participate that way. Every Rotarian every year, this is one of the most frustrating things that governors and uh, probably club foundation people uh, deal with. I, as I said earlier, I think every Rotarian ought to contribute to the foundation. The minimum to make every Rotarian every year is 25 bucks. There is not a person in Rotary, I dare say, that cannot afford to give 25 bucks to Rotary. In fact, we probably spend that much on coffee every month. Um, yet, we have 63% of our members, this is two weeks old, but it's probably still about that area, who are every Rotarian every year, 25 bucks or more. That ought to be 100%. Uh, Daybreak Rotary pretty much always is 100% uh, ERA. My club right now is 36%. I talked to them two weeks ago. Uh, that's not acceptable. Make an effort to, in your clubs, to emphasize the importance of what the foundation does and the importance of contributing to the foundation as a Rotarian. Now you're gonna say somebody will quit. Well, I gotta tell you, if, they, if they're really against giving $100 to the foundation at a minimum a year, 
I won't say I don't want them. I'm just saying they ought to think about it a little bit. Uh, I might be a little crass, but I don't know. That's what I think. Charts. Club Foundation guys. If you go to my rotary, there's a club giving section on my rotary. Whole bunch of uh, charts that you can get. I just pulled up one from the district. The district charts duplicate the, uh, the club charts. But there's a wealth of information there. It shows you how you're doing in this top left-hand corner, uh, how you're doing relative to last year, how you're doing to your goals. The chart right below it is a, a chart depiction of that. You got Polio Plus next over, same thing, showing you how many clubs are participated, how much money you've raised, how much money you need to raise to get to your goal. I talked with Michelle uh, a couple of days ago, I don't know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I was kind of out of it. Um, and uh, she thinks we're gonna have about 99,000. No, that was CART, Never mind. I don't know what this number is, but what we've got now is lower than normal, but we're making some progress on it. And then we've got, what are the other ones? The other funds and the endowment fund, uh, and you'll get a grand total at the end. We, we have a named endowment, which I don't know where it shows. I think it shows it on here. I just can't see it. Somebody, this young man down in uh, Triumph, uh, gave the district, or gave the foundation 25,000 plus uh, in his name, in his family's name. And every year, the interest off of that comes back to the district to give us funds to contribute to, to our district designated funds. This is a, if you've got someone in your club, I talked to a guy three weeks ago, um, he has really no heirs. Uh, I'm confident he could afford to do this. Uh, and so I mentioned this to him. I also mentioned it to a widow whose husband had been a long time Rotarian as a good way to remember him. Uh, and it also helps the district, but it remembers their legacy in Rotary. So I would encourage you to look around your club, see if there's somebody who kind of falls into that category. Now it's 25,000 or more. Uh, but there are a lot of people out there that can do that. And if you need help with doing it, just give me a, uh, drop me an email. Buzzing won't work. My phone doesn't work at the time. Governor Ken's expectation, uh, both on the foundation and on CART. And these are very basic expectations. $100 to the annual fund annually. Okay, that's, you know, peanuts. Uh, a thousand dollars a year. Many people, young people that I know in Rotary, they do this. Uh, it's less than a hundred bucks a month. Uh, most of them do about a hundred bucks a month, and they have it done by automatic draft. Never miss it. Each Rotarian contributes at least forty-five to Polio Plus. I'll talk about Polio Plus a little bit in a minute. Again, you're you're talking what four four dollars a month, a dollar a week to help people uh, prevent uh, polio, really not much. 40 bucks to cart. We all know about coins for arthritis, uh, Alzheimer's Research uh, Trust. A great, great organization. Governor Tiffany is the uh, one of the VPs in that organization and can answer anything you wanna know about that. We're doing okay. I, as I said, I talked to Michelle couple of three days ago, I believe it was Wednesday, uh, might have been Tuesday, I don't know. And she said, thought we'd get to 99,000 this year. That's good, that's good. Paul Harris Fellows, Paul Harris Fellows, I think everybody in this room knows it, but I'll say it anyway, means you've contributed at least $1,000 to the Rotary Foundation. Increase that number. I'm not sure exactly what the current number is, but I know it could be higher. In my club, I know it can be higher. Uh, when a new person comes into the club, make this a point of emphasis when you sit down and talk with them. Become a Paul Harris fellow. Show your support for the foundation. And as I, as I just said, I will continue as I go around the district in the next uh, few years uh, to encourage Rotary Direct. And you, you do that as a group and individually.
I would also every encourage every club to do E-Ray. The highest we've ever been, I believe it was in Billy's year, might have been in my year, was 89%, 88.7, 89%, which was excellent. But I took a lot of elbow grease on a part of the governor, governors and the foundation chairs in the clubs. Annual fund. This is where most of our money goes to, if not all of it. You've already set your goals, your fundraising goals. Uh, I would ask you, as you go through the year, to look at have, look at those goals. Were they high enough? I guarantee they won't be lo uh, too low. Were they high enough? Are we kind of are we looking at 100 bucks per member minimum? Again, there's a couple of clubs. There's three that I can think of immediately. They exceed 250 per a member every year. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just asking you to make sure you look at your goals as you go through the year. Every quarter, report back to your club on how they're doing, at least every quarter. Engage new members when they come in. We talk to them about service. Hopefully we talk to them about service. Part of being a Rotarian is contributing to the foundation. Talk to them about that. Tell them a little bit about the foundation. I just sponsored a young lady at our club and about 50% of the conversation was on the foundation because I know she knows what we do locally because uh, she's participated in it as a non-Rotarian, but she really didn't know what we did internationally. So, and then ask them to commit right then for a minimum of hundred bucks that year. Some found club foundation chairs will go as far to say, hey, why don't you just write me a check now, you'll get this out of the way and we won't pester you the rest of the year. Or they sign them up for Rotary Direct. I can't remember which club this is, but they sign their members up for Rotary, their new members up for Rotary Direct as a part of membership. Not a bad idea. Hold a, hold a fundraiser for a Rotary Area Focus. Some of you may have done this. I've seen this done well. I've seen it done okay. Let's say you've got uh, water, clean water, as your area of focus, or toilets in sanitation. Uh, you've got a county fair. You've got a, a, a city fair or something going on. Get a little booth. Put some brochures up. Have some of your more vocal members out there to engage people as they come in up and ask. I did one of these about, oh, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago, say, uh, at a county fair for polio. And partly we did it to get the word out on what polio is and that it still exists. I was amazed. I will bet you 80, 85% of the people that came up to that booth had no idea that polio existed in the world. Let alone, uh, let alone the extent of the problem. And back then, ten years ago, we were thought we were on the cusp of killing it. We were in the 50, 60 people a year. Uh, we're less than that now. Foundation chairs, club presidents, district governors, past district governors, assistant governors, committee chairs, lead by example. Old thing from the military. John Davis can talk to you until your ears bleed on this. If you're going to ask a friend of mine, we were talking about uh, a major contribution to the uh, to the foundation, and I wanted him to participate in this and to go out and help us get other people. And he said something very true: "I will not do this unless I contribute that myself, and I can't do it." Fair enough. But the club in the club. Be the first one to contribute your 100 bucks or your 200 bucks or your 1,000 bucks, whatever it is. Be the first one to contribute to Polio Plus. Be the first one to do CART. Be the first one to encourage a new member to do E-Ray and Rotary Direct. And if you're not a Rotary Direct person as a foundation chair, please do that. It takes five minutes and your life will be simple. Recognizing club members. Very important. Uh, you can overkill this, but it's very, very important. Paul Harris Fellows, that means a heck of a lot to people. A Paul Harris Fellow to the spouse of a Rotarian 
or a kid of a Rotarian or a grandkid of a Rotarian, you'd be surprised how much that affects the Rotarian, but those kids. A few years ago, uh, uh, Peoples, he had he was on he was dying and he knew he was dying, but he wanted all of his kids to be Paul Harris fellows. Well, he didn't have the points and nor had quite enough money to do that. The club made that happen by contributing points uh, against his money. Every one of his family uh, is a Paul Harris fellow. It sounds kind of insignificant, but it isn't to the people involved. We kind of get callous ourselves because we've been dealing with it. But remember that. And there's major donor uh, little crystal things and little buttons and such. Uh, we'll we'll have uh, uh, one of our one of our guys show off his button here in a minute. All right, let's see what we got next. Polio. Well, I talked a little bit about this. This, this project has been going on some, uh, seven, since 79. We always say 85, but really it started in 79 down in the Philippines. And uh, some Rotarians went down there to, to combat polio in that region. Evidently, it was rampant. In 85, it became a worldwide initiative. This is a big, big elephant to eat. I mean, we've been working on this, what's that, uh, 35, 36 years. We spend billions of dollars on that. And has it made an impact? Absolutely. As of right now, we've got two active cases of polio in the world. Af one in Afghanistan, one in Pakistan. I said this in 2016, we had six cases at the time, that I really think we can rid the world of polio this year. I think we have a great chance in the coming rotary year to do just that. If we keep up the vaccination effort, if we keep up um, con our contributions, it takes buckets of money to do this. Rotary realized that, partnered with various people, the UN, CDC, the Gates Foundation, and uh, World Health, or Health Organization, which is really sort of part of the UN. Gates is very important because every dollar we give, they match $2. Uh, and I understand they're getting divorced. I don't think that'll have anything to, to do with the foundation, but this is a big deal. And they've made another commitment for three years to do this. So every dollar gets $3. Remember that. John Jern, who's our incoming trustee chairman, uh, and was also my president when I was governor, says it'll take at least five more years of Polio Plus to get there. About $1.8 billion dollars uh, over that five-year period. It takes millions each year, as I, as I said, uh, to contain it. So we kill it this coming year and Ken's year. You got to go three years without any others. And then we do a focus for two years after that. That's how he came up with five years. Every dollar you give makes a difference. None of us want to live or see someone live like this. A quick story from my youth. I may be five years old, living in the south part of the county. We had maybe 300 yards, not maybe not that, that far, between the houses. Our minister who lived maybe a half mile down the road by the bridge, not that that matters, uh, son had polio. He was a teenager. I'm not sure exactly how old, but he was a teenager. In an iron lung. Nobody would go to church. Nobody would go near the house. Uh, people did his shopping and left it, um, you know, sitting out by the mailbox. I mean, it was a terrible, terrible time. A uh, couple, three years later, the vaccine was available and we all began to take that. But if you haven't experienced that, or seen that, you have no idea uh, how important your dollar is to give to polio. You may have a story of your own. I found that it's more effective. If you can tell a story, relate a story from someone else's life, if you don't have one, to show the impact of Rotary in our country. Because that 
that county fair thing I did with polio, these young people, you know, 20, 25, 30 years old with kids, they have no concept, no concept that polio is there. And it's only a plane ride away from us. Annual fund share. All right, you put that money into the annual fund, what happens to it? Last month, I would have said 50% goes to the uh, DDF, 50% goes to the World Fund. Well, we've been so successful in our global grants that our World Fund is out of money. It's as simple as that. Uh, so the trustees, well, John Germ and the incoming trustees got together and they figured out, okay, we want to fund as many grants as we possibly can. Seven years ago, when we started this global grant process, uh, we were doing about 50, 60 grants a year. Last year, we did over 1,300 grants. Now, should somebody have said, eh, no, wait a minute, we can't do that anymore. Well, maybe, but we didn't because the money's there to do these kinds of things. Anyway, John German and the crowd, they came up with a scheme, this is part of it, to rebuild the world fund. And it means we get 47.5% to the district designated funds, same amount to the world fund instead of 50%. The DDF, the district, district designated funds, is directed by the, uh, by the district, uh, by the foundation committee, by the governor through the foundation committee. We fund district grants and sometimes, <coughs> pardon me, and parts of global grants. The world fund, does these worldwide grants and matching funds for global grants. And it's usually where the trustees see the greatest need. A couple of years ago, actually last year, I guess, we started a new initiative to have a major, major funding effort. Uh, I think the latest one is 2.2 million. And I don't recall what it is, what it's for, but uh, that kind of money can make a significant impact when it's applied to a specific problem. Global grants, you can read this, I'm not gonna read it to you. We do a global uh, man, uh, grant management seminar in the fall and we go into excruciating detail on this. Uh, these things are simple, but very complicated. I, I know that sounds silly. Large international projects valued at least 30,000. You have to partner with a host club overseas uh, other districts, uh, and you can, of course, partner with local clubs and districts and someone else overseas. It responds to a need in that community, not what you think the need is, not what the Rotarian in that club over there thinks the need is, but what the community needs, uh, says it needs. That sounds simple. It's very difficult. You really have to send a site team out and talk with the community in an honest, straightforward way to make that happen. We've done this many times. It of course has to be aligned to an area of focus, has to be measurable. You can measure how many people are getting fresh water. It has to be sustainable. That's a little more difficult to do. So you put in wells, six wells in a row, and you're giving water to 3000 people. Okay, you're doing that until a pump breaks. Do they know how to fix the pump? Do they have parts? Do they know where to get parts? Is the pump impossible to fix? Those kinds of things. So you have to answer those questions and prepare, prepare for that before you do the grant. The sources of funds, you can see those through the club, through DDF and through the World Fund. Very flexible. If I said today, Davis, you and I are gonna start on a uh, global grant on, I don't know, uh, maternity care in Botswana. It would take us probably up to 18 months to get all of our stuff together so we can actually do this. It's a multi-year grant, there are no deadlines. There are deadlines for reports uh, because you know we wanna make sure the money's being spent uh, appropriately. But it, it's a larger project doing a, meeting a larger need in a community that says it needs it. Three types of them, humanitarian project, which is what we we're very familiar with, vocational training teams. You can see what they are. A lot of these teams go out uh, to learn from the country, 
to determine what the needs are. Uh, medical teams have been very uh, uh, successful in this district. We've done several of those. Scholarship programs have been very successful. I believe, I may be wrong, uh, but John will correct me if I am. I believe we have five, four ongoing and one pending. This is a great opportunity for someone to get a master's degree uh, in their area of study. You can't come right out of uh, a bachelor's program and go right into it. You have to have some experience. We did a reverse one five or six years ago with a lady from Belize. She's an educator. And we believe then and still believe that uh, she will be a big, have a big impact in her country because she came to the United States to get her master's degree in education and curriculum development. And then she goes back to Belize. Uh, good programs, fairly simple to do with the right guidance. Okay, you say, okay, oh, that sounds great. What kind of opportunity do I have for a global grant? How do I find out about those things? Well, let's say you've got an international project. We did a toilet project in Peru. I don't know how many it was, 20 or 30 concrete pits, basically. Let's say we wanted to expand that to that whole region uh, to do those projects. That's the basis for a global grant. Friendship exchange trips. We don't do those formally anymore, but we still have Rotarians traveling across uh, country lines, talking to each other. Opportunity to learn from them what they're doing. We had a lady from, uh, that came here from uh, Soto, India. And she happened to be the mayor, about a 30 year old. And they had problems, uh, well, they had problems. The females had no toilet system in that whole town. And so the ladies, of course, were very reluctant to go out at night. So a couple of clubs in the district uh, got together and we funded uh, toilets in that area. In fact, my wife has a toilet named after her. I made a point out of doing that just because I could tell her that, you know? You can partner with it. My daughter is laughing at me, but it's the God's truth. You can partner with other charitable organizations or other uh, non-government organizations. Partner with another club. Several years ago, we did uh, one in, another one in India, in Yapur, with a girls club. I think we ended up having like eight or nine clubs in the district contributing small amounts of money. Don't remember the exact total uh, of the uh, grant, but it's somewhere around $70,000 doing some good for that girls' school. And we still keep in touch with those. Project fairs. A lot of people don't even know these things exist. I didn't until I went to one down in Central America. They have these project fairs where clubs will come in and districts will come into these fairs and say, okay, here's my project. They have a little booth. It's kind of like a international uh, district assembly uh, where you've got all these booths and they've got all their booths and they're trying to sell you on it. So, you you know, you kind of got to have a, a little tainted ear, but you can find projects. Jim Eflin, myself and a couple others, uh, we looked at 33 or 34 projects that we thought had worth. And I think Jim narrowed that down to two and we ended up doing one. There's also a Rotary Matching Grants website. It's kind of the same thing, except it's there all the time. You go there and they'll be, okay, District 7670 is looking for somebody to help us out with a project in Guatemala. And okay, maybe that's an opportunity. International Convention. Hopefully we'll get back to face-to-face -face this coming year and go to the House of Friendship. It is one of the most popular aspects of the convention. You will find booths, much like in the project fairs, much like in the Magic Grants, except you're, you can talk to these people at length because they're there for a significant period of time. Uh, we've discovered several there. We also send people. Bill Shilato, I will guarantee you, will be at every international convention with a CART booth and telling the world about CART and how important it is. Sarah Latham, who happens to be on this call, uh, hope she hopefully she hasn't hung up on me. Uh, she can help. She's the international affairs director for uh, the district. 
and she keeps up with all this stuff. She's done extraordinary work organizing all of these things that I just talked about into something usable by the clubs. If you're at all interested, drop her an email, a text, and let her know. She'll respond. The governor mentioned this a moment ago. The governor-elect mentioned this a moment ago. Application deadline for the district grants for this year, for his year, is 22 May. Uh, you know what they do. They find a variety of uh, projects and activities. You see what they are. I'm not going to read them to you. Managed by the district, but you really do the work. The club does the work. I really like what uh, DGE Ken did by making having the goals into DACTV as a requirement for district grants. I wish I had thought of this. It's such a simple and great idea. Not only does it make you put your goals in, but it focuses, perhaps, focuses your attention on, hey, we can do some district grants. We have all kinds of projects going on. Maybe we can use some of these funds to do that. You can see the others, current on your obligations and your dues, of course. You can't have a, a current district grant open and apply for another one. Uh, you can only apply for one grant uh, and it can, uh, no grant or club can exceed 2000. The exception is if you partner with another club, you can aggregate to 3000. And the grants must be, and I would, you know, we have clubs that have, I mean, towns that have two, three, four, five uh, clubs in their area. Partner with them. Uh, extend that money as far as you can. As Governor Ken said, grant must be completed by the 1st of May and your final report in by 15 May. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm going to repeat some of that because it's pretty important. Final reports got to be completed before 20 May. I'm sure you have some changes or have had some changes. They must be approved uh, before you can and implement that uh, grant. The club will not be reimbursed if not approved. The club will not be reimbursed if you start a project before it's approved officially through RI and the district cha uh, 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 channels. That's important because a lot of people say, okay, district took my grant. I'm going to go off and do it. Uh, no, we have to wait till RI approves it. And that usually is in late June, early July. Just be patient. That doesn't mean you can not be doing some legwork, but do not spend any money. Must be completed by 1 May of next year. Goals are in. Keep a record of transactions, invoices, and checks. Nancy Brooks will not be your friend if you don't, because she will uh, really ask you to show those. And if you can't, you're going to have trouble getting the funds. Take pictures. Not only does it help in the final report, but it also encourages other clubs, other districts to try things. Little club like Burnsville did a, did a district grant. I don't remember exactly the extent of it, but it was very successful. They had like 10 members. If a 10 member club can do that, I guarantee you a 35 member club can do that. So it's that kind of uh, emphasis for the photos. Let's say you complete your project in the fall and this happens quite a bit because you've got something that's a summer or early fall project. If you complete it, you got 20 days to, to file that report. Get it in, get it in later or earlier than later. There's no reason to sit down and wait on it. Don't procrastinate in other words. Okay, I talked a little bit about this, but I'll talk a little bit more about it. Again, we have John Davis and uh, who's a pro at this. Uh, the Global Grant Scholarships, you can see what it says there. Both, uh, this is open year round. Uh, you've got to kind of get all the applications done to coincide with the school year. That's kind of one of the issues with it. So the earlier you start on that, the better it is. Uh, you've got to have a bachelor's degree and some experience. Uh, it'll go to virtually any international university. Currently, I believe we have three in England, which seems to be a popular spot uh, currently. We had a lady in Italy 
a couple of years ago, another pop, actually we've had several, two or three in Italy, which has been a popular spot. The foundation decision will take three, four weeks. That's flexible. A lot of that depends on the paperwork. A lot of that depends on how the interview process went, uh, but it can move very quickly or it can take up to a month to get it done. Reports, uh, well, annual and final grant reports uh, by the club. This can be an issue. The scholar has to keep good records and provide those to you so that you and the scholar can make sure it's good before it goes to uh, Nancy over to uh, Foundation Committee. Peace fellowships. Total, it, this is a very, very competitive uh, operation. Funded by RI, bachelor's degrees, I've got to have field experience. It's an open season. Uh, you can see that each year. Vetted applications have to be interviewed and endorsed uh, by one July of the year. Restricted, or you can see the restrictions. The uh, decision takes four, it takes a while to get the decision out of Rotary International, mainly because the scholarships are, are limited uh, and they'll get them from all over the world. There's no reports done, which I always kind of find interesting. Uh, but once you get into this process, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty much a done deal. A lot more nuances than I talked about. That's why we have people working on this. Uh, John Davis, John DeWitt, they know this stuff cold. Uh, I can BS you and perhaps answer a question or two, but they'll give you the straight answer. Nancy Brooks has been, doing, been our stewardship chair, I don't know, several years now, six, seven years. She was the one that makes sure the books are right. She's a nice, sweet, wonderful woman. She's also a CPA. And if your CPA stuff's okay, she's a nice, sweet, wonderful woman. If it's not, she's a CPA. So you're gonna go have to find those bills, those uh, receipts. Past District Governor Bob Miller, who's on this call, and O'Neill Shelton, and I'm trying to recruit two other people, are Polio Plus guys. And their role is out there to help you raise money. If you need a speaker, call them, call me. They'll come or do a Zoom call of that nature. O'Neill has been working in uh, the polio area as long as I can recall. He has friends who've had polio. He's very passionate about it. And Bob is a past district governor from, I don't know, 2002 or some somewhere in that neighborhood. So he's been around a long time and he knows the story well. They can help you in short. I mentioned Sarah Latham, our international services chair. I called her a director, I didn't mean to do that. International services chair. She's done yeoman work in a lot of areas, club presidents, all the club uh, activities, uh, district conferences, all that kind of stuff. She loves this and is doing a great job at it. And of course, I'm here anytime, email me or text me. Phones, my cell phone doesn't work at my house. My, my home phone does, but I, I will answer your questions or I'll find somebody who can. Million dollar debtor. This is something a lot of us have talked about over the years and we just have not. How do I hide myself here? That red button? Okay, good. We've talked about this for years, but never quite done it because, you know, we're kind of afraid of it. But Ken and uh, Tammy and uh, David decided we're going to do a million dollar debt. First time ever. Great opportunity. The goal is to raise a million dollars in new major and planned gifts. That means 10,000 bucks or more to the Rotary Foundation. We began this campaign almost silently in October. Uh, and we'll finish in March of 2022 and have that dinner sometime in April. That's to be determined. We've got a team of about 11 people working on this. We have 100,000 or so uh, committed already, but that leaves us $900,000 short. 
seven way, uh, several ways to make a major gift or a bequest of 10,000. Some of these are absolutely painless. Uh, cash gift, that depends on you. Uh, a gift of stock. We've had a huge uh, increase in the stock market over the last six years. Uh, you've probably got capital gains that you may not want to pay uh, taxes on if you sell it. So if you're planning to sell it, this is a way to do it. Do an annuity. I've done two of these. These things work. Basically, you give the Rotary Foundation 10 grand. Uh, they determine a, uh, an interest rate that they're going to pay you yearly, and they'll pay it. For as long as you live, or in our case, as long as my wife and I live. And then the money belongs totally to Rotary. Actually, it already belongs to them. They're just paying us interest. You could do a pledge, kind of the same deal. I pledge to give you $3,300 or whatever it is uh, over three years. You can do a life insurance, other kinds of requests, life insurance uh, with a beneficiary. Uh, there's all kinds of methods. If you're at all interested in contributing and being part of this, talk to Carol King, talk to Isaac, email me, text me, call me. We will get an expert to talk to you. We're very lucky in this district to have Carl Davis living down the Fayetteville area. He's a professional fundraiser for Rotary, and he can guide you to cho choose which one you want to do. If you're 70 and a half or more, and you have, well, if you have to take a uh, RMD, required minimum distribution each year, and well, I started to do this, and your RMD say is uh, 10,000 or 12,000 a year, that year. You can use that contribution from your RMD to this uh, as a major gift, and not pay taxes on it because it does have an impact on your taxes, those RMD do. People like Carl can talk to you about this and make sure you make a wise decision. They'll give you options. They will not in, uh, browbeat you into giving money. They will give you options. And if you want to contribute, contribute. And we hope you do. Uh, all right, sort of in conclusion, I guess. I don't have any other slides I got, but uh, part of being a Rotarian, and I believe this in my bones, is to support our charity. Uh, if, if you're not supporting the foundation, my bones say maybe you need to reassess what kind of Rotarian you are. May not, you're not a bad Rotarian, but you can be a better Rotarian. I talked about the uh, contribution to the annual uh, it goes to the World Fund and to the DDF from your annual fund. I talk about polio and how it's still a challenge and needs our support for at least five more years. Uh, the million dollar dinner, 10,000 bucks or more, please, if you're interested or if you know someone as the foundation chair and you know someone in your club that might be interested, contact us. You're not out there by yourself. My plan this year is to monthly send uh, four or five little bullet points on things to think about that month. We are here to help you, not to push you to do stuff, not to browbeat you, but to help you. So if you need to have a question, you need something done that you can't quite figure out, that's why we're here. Otherwise, we're just occupying space. Uh, your club foundation chair and president are key to the foundation giving in your club. If the president of that club makes it an emphasis, then people will contribute if the, if the club foundation chair follows up. It's the same thing in the district. If the district governor makes it an emphasis and the district foundation chair follows up on it, the district will do extremely well. So I ask all of us to contribute to the TRF uh, it is our tool to do good in the world. And we've been doing this since night, not me personally, but since 1916. And that's a pretty good track record. Now, if there are any questions, comments, or snide remarks, I will answer them. Off to you, Governor. Governor Dells, thank you so much. You've got us off to a fantastic start.